This episode of Financial Model Detective is about debt service coverage ratios. So in this video, I'm trying to have a fresh look, a new look at this concept of debt service coverage ratio and uh, just see if I can learn something new about this metric that I've been dealing with for years in my project finance models and in the deals when I'm involved. So the first thing, the question that I want to ask myself is what is debt service coverage ratio? And uh, when I pose this question, the first thing that comes to my mind is that debt service coverage ratios, uh, the, the different types, historical, projected, and all of them, they are all debt metrics, meaning that they are indicators for lenders that this project is healthy, meaning that it can repay their debt easily. Okay, so these are the metrics that the lenders, they monitor and they also use it for the evaluation process and also for the monitoring processes. Now, the next question that I want to ask is, that, okay, so it's a metric that you are telling me that I need to calculate in my financial models during the feasibility studies and also post feasibility studies for monitoring the project. Okay, but how do I calculate it? Uh, to give you the definition of the DSCR, I'm going to show you an extract from a loan agreement which says that DSCR is just the ratio of the net cash flow received during a calculation period. And a calculation period has also its own definition. And the debt service paid during such calculation period. So it's basically what we call cash flow available for debt service divided by debt service. So in the denominator, you have the cash that is available to pay for the debt. And in the denominator, you have the amount of debt service, meaning the principal and the interest. So however, you might ask yourself, so what is this cash flow available for debt service that you are telling me? How do I calculate that? So that one is another topic that I already covered in another tutorial. And it's about the cash flow waterfall and the, the priority of these different cash flow items in the cash flow waterfall until we get to this line called cash flow available for debt service. I'm going to put the link and you can go and check it out later. Okay, the next question is, is it contractual? I mentioned that, you know, the definition is included in the term sheet in the loan agreement with the lenders. So yes, it is contractual and it is the definition and the thresholds are included in the loan agreements. So when you're modeling, you need to go to the loan agreement and check for what are the requirements by lenders and include it in your financial model. So these are the things that you need to go and check with the term sheets. Okay, so I explained to you all this about how to calculate it. It's a ratio of CFADS over that service. It is included, you know, as a definition in the loan agreement and all this but exactly what it means and that is the whole purpose of this video for me to understand what this ratio means okay so uh, to understand it you know let's do a numerical kind of example let's say that you have in the in one model period you have like hundred hundred of cash okay cash that is available to pay for your lenders and in that semester or in that quarter, you need to pay 50, whatever, US dollar, 50,000, 50 million to your lenders, okay? So the debt service coverage ratio in that model period is 100 divided by 50, which is 2, right? So if somebody asks, you know, the ratio is 2x. But let's go a little bit further. What does that mean exactly? Okay, this means that in that model period, the cash that is available, hope, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to do what we call a break even analysis, which I really like this concept. So it tells you that by how much should the cash flow available um, to debts to debt providers needs to go down in order to just be in the, the I call the orange you know area 
you have the red which is you cannot pay the debt this the cash available is not enough to pay for the debt the green is that is enough so you're above one below one and if it is one it means that the cash flow available for debt service is exactly equal to your debt service so that's what we call a break-even point so in this break-even point by how much should my cash flow available for debt service go down or you know until i have this break-even point for the case for the example that i mentioned here 100 divided by 50 is 2x this means that your cash flow needs to go down by 50 percent then your cash flow available will be just enough to pay for the debt service okay so 50 percent which is quite good so if you have a project with a minimum a DSCR of 2x I mean depends on the project if you are talking about mining projects my friend Perry can tell you more about it maybe 2 is something acceptable not even high but for like other kind of in infrastructure projects 2x is a very high ratio right so meaning that you know there is a 50% cash buffer in your uh, in your basically cash in that model period specific model period okay so then let's go a little bit further and say that, okay, when you're drafting your loan agreement or when you receive a letter of interest from your lenders, one of the metrics that they're going to tell you is that in your base case, I want you to make sure I want to have a minimum uh, debt service cover ratio of, let's say, 1.3x. That's the minimum that we require. Okay, so that's the phrase that they're going to tell you verbally or in written in the loan agreement that our minimum requirement is 1.x so what does that mean given this definition of cash buffer and break-even analysis can we interpret this um, 1.3 now requirement by lender so if we go with the same logic uh, with the 1.3 this means that the lenders you know when the, they, they ask you for 1.3 this means that they need a cash buffer of at least 23 percent okay if it is below 23 percent then they say that this is an indicator if something goes wrong that we don't have much cash uh, secure ourselves you know against downside so they require this 1.3 to make sure that there is enough cash to pay back the loan if things go wrong and the cash buffer that they require is 23 percent if they require 1.3x okay so that was about what i wanted to explain now i'm going to show you how i'm going to integrate this concept of cash buffer into my financial models and before i go into that i should give the credit uh, to Professor Edward Butmer because that I learned this from him from his book you know project finance modeling and corporate uh, finance modeling and from his website I'm going to put the link as well for you to go and check it out by yourself but I think that this the way the interpretation in the way of percentages and the cash buffer is for me at least it's something that I understand much better than just to express it in terms of a metric and a ratio so let's go and i will show you how i'm going to incorporate that into my financial model okay so i'm showing you here one of my project finance model this is my return and ratio sheet where i do my ratio calculations so i do the typical debt service cover rate ratio calculation meaning that i take the cfa ds and i divide it by debt service in each model period and this is going to give me you know the debt service coverage ratio in each model period here i am uh, on semi-annual basis and i then i calculate what i call my summary metrics which is the minimum average and the maximum of these ratios that i already calculated then I also include the check. I say, okay, the minimum that the lenders require, this is in the input sheet, is 1.2. And I almost have 1.21. So I am okay. So the check is going to be okay. So this is the typical thing that I include. And it's I think it's good enough, right, in terms of what is required to be built in a financial model. However, I want to include this uh, concept of break-even analysis and the cash buffer. It's, it's the same thing, but another interpretation of the same thing, basically. Okay, so I'm going to come and I'm going to add three lines. 
And um, so you see what I want to do here is I'm going to add a, a line that I'm going to call cash buffer and I'm going to put that percentage here in this line. So meaning that here I want to say by how much should this cash flow go down so that I get a minimum so that I get my uh, coverage ratio of one. Okay, let's just go back again just for a minute and write down the definition. So we said that debt service coverage ratio by definition is CFADS, the cash flow available, divided by debt service. Okay, so now what I want here, I want to know that my CFADS, okay, I want to multiply this by, let's call it X divided by that service and I want this to be one okay so I want to find out what this x is so if I just do the math my x is going to be one over cfads cfads divided by that service right and basically this x is going to be one over that service sorry that yes that service coverage ratio okay so for example if I come here and I do one over this that's going to tell me that if I multiply this one by I cannot link it I'm just going to type it 80 percent you will see that this is going almost to one because this was not exactly 80 percent it was 79 point something most probably okay so that's basically the definition however i want to express it in in terms of a cash buffer meaning that i want to say that if the cash flow goes down by 20 percent right instead of saying that i multiplied by 80 percent i'm going to say the cash can go down by 20 percent and that's going to be my break even point so that's going to be the definition of cash buffer now that i know i'm just going to write an if formula because i don't want to calculate it when i don't need to so if the flag is zero i'm gonna if this is flag is one then i'm gonna have one minus one over that service if not uh, i'm just gonna put not applicable okay or not available right okay so that's basically it you see the this is this means that the cash buffer here is 20 21 18 and all that okay so now what was the cash buffer required by lenders cash buffer required by lenders if i go back to my input sheet let me go back you will see that i have included I have included uh, that, you know, the minimum periodic DSCR required by my lenders is 1.2x. Okay, so if I express that in terms of percentage, it's going to be basically the same thing. If my flag is 1, then you're going to put 1 minus 1 over, but this time is this one, and I'm going to fix it. Okay. If not, put not available, not applicable, whatever. Okay. So, yep. Let's do this and, and just drag it along. And, okay, I did something wrong. One. Okay, so I'm sorry. I just linked it to the wrong cell. Okay. Control C, shift control, right arrow, control V. And here we go. I'm just going to change the formatting, Alt HP. Okay, so now you see that so I can compare. So this is, I have 20% cash buffer and the lenders require 17. So I'm okay here. So instead of doing it one by one, I'm going to create a check as well. Cash buffer check. I don't, I'm not sure about the names yet, but, uh, and this is a check. And this is saying that this is less or greater and equal to this okay and this check i'm going to see whether it is satisfied or not oops okay sorry about that so it was the other way around right 
So I want to make sure that what I have as a cash buffer is always greater or equal than what the lenders require. So that means that I am okay and this is all fine. If however, which is most of the time is the case, the lenders, they don't require 1.2, but they require, let's say 1.25, okay? Then what's going to happen if I go back to my uh, calculations, I see that, you know, I get all these reds, meaning that this requirement is not met, okay? Because the cash buffer that the lenders require is 20% and I have only 18%. So this was, as I told you, another interpretation of the same thing because I already have this built into my model in terms of ratios. But I just, you know, just to give another perspective to this metric, I also include this cash buffer in my financial models. And it's just for me to better understand it. If also it is easier for you to understand it in terms of cash buffer, I also recommend that you build the same thing into your project finance models. And uh, okay, that's it for me. If there is if anything you want to else that you how want to build to cover in my next models, video, let check me out my online and course I hope to on see you in my models, next video. Thank you and bye. At